So following our definitions of MPU, MCU, and SOC, really these things are used uh, primarily, as we said, most of the systems in the world are embedded inside embedded systems. So an embedded system is a combination of computer hardware and software that is specifically designed for a particular function. I, I brought here a few different definitions of embedded systems from different books and quotes I found. Loosely defined, it is any device that includes a programmable computer, but is not in itself intended to be a general purpose computer. An embedded computer system includes a microcomputer with mechanical, chemical, and electrical devices attached to it, programmed for a specific dedicated person purpose and packaged as a complete system. Embedded systems are the electronic systems that contain microprocessor or a microcontroller, but we do not think of them as computers. The computer is hidden or embedded in the system. So basically, to, to, to summarize all of that, um, if we have, you know, a, a computer like a CPU, such as something like uh, Intel or AMD would put out that we use primarily as, you know, the main kind of thing inside our laptop, inside our desktop, inside our server, that is sold as a core or as a, a computer. But when we take something different, for example, um, the microphone that I'm using to record this on, or a remote control, or uh, basically anything that I look around my room right now and I see hundreds of different types of devices like this that have some sort of electronic and smart functionality, which means they have chips inside. But th their pr uh, purpose is not to be a computer, it's to do something else. And that um, is what we call an embedded system. So the computer itself is not the main feature, it's embedded inside the system. Um, with that being said, we, you know, almost all these embedded systems are used for something physical in the world, and therefore they're often called cyber-physical systems. So a cyber-physical system is one that combines physical devices, known as the plant, with computers that control the plant. An embedded computer is the cyber part of the cyber-physical systems. We can take this uh, table, you know, taken from one of the, the books in the reference that shows different categories of, uh, of markets that use embedded systems. If it's home, automotive, office and commerce, medical, industrial, consumer electronics and networking. And we have dozens of examples of, you know, these types of devices that have, uh, you know, embedded computers inside them. Just our washing machine or refrigerator or our microwave oven, they have, you know, these, the, the, these chips inside that make them get their functionality. So they're embedded systems. If we go to automotive, you know, nowadays uh, cars are getting more and more and more chips. We'll have hundreds, we'll have thousands of chips, especially if we're going th towards autonomous cars. So they're really complex embedded systems. You know, of course, uh, office stuff like printers, photocopiers, even our coffee machine has chips and has smarts inside. Medical, uh, more and more devices are becoming, you know, smart, electronic, infusion pumps, blood pressure monitors, etc. Industrial uses, different types of robots and industrial motors and elevator controller uh, control and so forth. And consumer electronics, of course, our TVs have been smart TVs for a long time. Our cell phones are crazy embedded systems. You know, set-top boxes, which I guess nowadays would be uh, replaced with streamers. You know, our watches are pretty, you know, smart nowadays. And even our toys that we're buying for our kids um, and networking. Of course, the routers and hubs and so forth, they are very, very complicated and uh, strong embedded systems often. But some of the embedded devices um, can perform a variety of functions. So if we take a smartphone, it's really a supercomputer just inside our pocket. But um, it traditionally would be called an embedded system because, remember, this was originally supposed to be something that we'd make calls on, not something that we would, you know, do everything else in the world on. Digital TVs, we have, you know, Chromecast inside or whatever. But originally it was to watch TV and all the other functionality of a real strong computer um, was added later. But they can really do a lot of functions uh, often. The interesting thing about an embedded system, which is very different from any maybe type of uh, uh, programming course that you, you probably have done, is that really all embedded systems have basically the same um, you know, main loop. The, the, their main program is just while one, do the embedded program. And the interesting about that, you know, other than uh, as opposed to regular programs or regular functions, it never executes a return. It never exits. There's no place to return to. It's always sitting there doing whatever it's supposed to do, waiting for you know some sort of uh, user interface or whatever to tell it do the next thing or some sort of timer or or something to do it. So all of these embedded programs are just using this never-ending while loop.
to kind of summarize that, let's look at general versus embedded computer systems. A general computer system, such as the laptop shown down below, you know, it has a microprocessor or several microprocessors inside. It usually has a large primary memory based on, you know, uh, RAM, DRAM, and uh, uh, cache hierarchy inside. We'll talk about that later on in the course. Um, it will have a large secondary memory, uh, hard disk drive. Nowadays, we're talking about uh, solid state drives. We used to have these, you know, things called DVDs or CD-ROMs. Um, inside these types of systems. It will usually, almost always, I guess always probably, run an operating system such as Linux, such as Windows, such as uh, iOS. And it will be very general purpose uh, to providing user interfaces and different application software we can run on that. So that is what we would usually typically call a general computer system. On the other hand, an embedded uh, computer system, it's hardware that includes the core and necessary I.O. for a specific function. Um, and so it's really there to make a specific function such as this, this uh, medical monitor we have over here. It embeds the main application software into embedded flash. And, and so it uses some sort of read-only memory type thing to have its program that it's going to be running all the time. It's not usually just some sort of uh, program that we're going to keep on loading from some sort of hard disk uh, onto the, the main memory to run it. It, it, you, it. it will have either a real-time operating system that supervises the application software that's running on the hardware or it will just run bare metal without any type of operating system. So that's kind of a differentiation, uh, like a high level differentiation between general and embedded computer systems. So what are the characteristics of embedded systems? They really um, can have limited hardware and, uh, and software functionality, limited performance, um, limited power consumption, limited memory, limited hardware functionality. They'll either have uh, very limited um, operating systems, which may, may need to be real-time, such as a, a, an, uh, an Artos, or they may not have any operating system. They may run bare metal. So we'll be discussing these things later in the course. And I just gave it as an example here, you know, a remote control. It, it's not supposed to do really anything except for control our TV or, or something like that, but it may have some sort of uh, other functionality like being able to teach it and memorize things and so forth. So it really has to have um, an embedded system inside. These are usually custom designed for a dedicated function. And um, that, for example, this remote control is only supposed to really control the device that it was made for. It's not supposed to go and play you know, some sort of a game on. They uh, sometimes have to have high quality and reliability. So I gave the example of a pacemaker over here. You know, it has to work for a long, 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 long time, and it's not allowed to fail. And some of them have really sophisticated functionality. They may uh, run complex algorithms, may provide a fancy user interface. Just as an example, you know, a, a Google Nest Hub over here. Um, it's an embedded system, but it does a lot of things and runs a real complicated operating system with a complicated user interface on it. Some of them may have to have low latency and provide real-time operation. So as you know, uh, one of the real uh, hard examples I gave, uh, you know, the Tesla full uh, self-driving uh, type of a chip. And um, you have inside your, your car or whatever, you, if you don't brake on time or you don't make a decision on time to, to change the steering wheel, um, then you're going to be in real trouble. So uh, it really has to have a high quality of service and provide low latency. These things might have to have multi-rate support, so several real-time activities may be going on at the same time. They may simultaneously control some operation that runs at slow rates and other that runs at high rates. For example, audio, which is real slow, versus video that may have a lot higher bandwidth. So I gave it as, as an example over here, you know, a Roku stick that has to, you know, um, provide us video on TV, but it may do a lot of other things that are much slower at the same time. And of course, system costs. So uh, a lot of embedded systems, um, you know, their sales are driven by their, their price. So they have to be really limited in their manufacturing costs to get them uh, to have a small price tag at the end. And they may have really limited power and energy budgets. And I gave in this example over here, you know, an Apple AirTag that really has been a savior with uh, all kinds of baggage getting lost um, in, in uh, post-COVID flights. So um, they really have to work for a long, 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 long time, maybe do doing some energy harvesting or something like that. But they actually have some pretty sophisticated um, technology inside, um, but it really should be kept cheap. 
So let's take a real simple example just to look at this. And we'll take an air conditioning system. So um, the air conditioning system is going to have maybe some sort of uh, temperature sensors and so forth that are going to go, you know, they're going to get um, some analog, the whole world is analog, so some analog signal that's going to come into our embedded system, into our microcontroller. And so we will have some uh, analog to digital converters that will convert it into, you know, digital um, data that we can then go and decide, aha, it got too hot outside, we better go and, you know, send our uh, signals over to some sort of a uh, uh, control that will turn on our compressor and turn on our fan to make it colder inside. And then we might have some like current detector that will actually monitor, you know, how uh, cold or, uh, our air conditioner is becoming and how strong our fan is and make sure that, you know, the control over here has some sort of a uh, feedback loop that keeps it at the right at the right pace. Um, with that, we're also going to probably, you know, have some sort of a display that's going to be on our air conditioner that's going to show how strong our fan is right now or what the temperature is outside. And we're going to have some sort of remote control or something or some sort of user interface that will allow us to, you know, change these settings and so forth. And that will have to have some sort of a, a communication um, uh, interface that will enable us to bring that in. Um, lastly, we have some sort of on-chip flash that's probably going to have the program that runs this whole thing and some RAM that may be storing some temporary state of the air conditioner. So that's a real simple example of a microcontroller. Let's go, you know, one notch up to an old type, uh, old style iPod type of portable music player. And here what we're going to have is, again, you know, some sort of a control that we can, you know, skip uh, between our songs or, or go and raise the volume or so forth. And that has to come through some sort of an, uh, an interface. And on the other side, we have to have some sort of display that we're going to show, you know, what song is playing and where it's playing and so forth so we have to have some sort of lcd controller or something like that and of course memory you know to store um to store the state of all that type of stuff we're probably going to have some sort of a um a digital uh, signal processor that's going to take the songs and so forth and turn them you know and, and process them in order to output them into some sort of an interface like an i square s that will go and in the end play on our headphones or or on our our speaker um of course we're going to want to um, store you know music or bring in music so we may have some internal NAND flash that's going to store our music and maybe some external SD card that's going to um, be able to bring our music into the into the chip um, move it onto on chip RAM send it to the digital signal processor and finally to this external interface that's going to play it on our uh, speakers and of course we're going to have some sort of battery that's going to have to go through some sort of power management unit to first of all save power when we're not using it um, bring the voltage levels down to what our, our system is supposed to use and so forth and we may have some sort of interface for you know some sort of wireless co connectivity if it's to our uh, earphones or to some sort of external you know host or something like that so those are kind of simple socs but uh, um, what uh, is very commonly found nowadays are these kind of generic socs that are um, sold by companies like nvidia which makes a, a product called the tegra which you can see here that they provide this kind of a more generic system that you can then put into your different embedded systems. And you can see it has different things like, you know, a bunch of uh, ARM cores in here, Cortex-A9s. It has a cache. You know, it has some video encoders. It has a GPU inside. It has different types of interfaces to the outside world. It has some memory controllers. Um, it has some maybe audio and video um, external connections and so forth. So that's a pretty, uh, you know, this is uh, very old. It's from something like 2010, but it was the chip that powered different tablets such as the, you know, Acer tablets, Asus tablets, and the Samsung Galaxy tab. So that's the type of uh, thing that you may find in a more generic product of a system on chip that's being sold. Of course, taking, you know, the different Apple uh, SOC families, and this is, a, again, stops quite a while ago back in 2013, but if we... Um, take, you know, the uh, the Apple A4, A5, all the way up to the A7, we see they have different levels of CPUs, um, ARM Cortex CPUs, then going over to probably, you know, Apple internally designed ARM cores, and um, just different uh, uh, technologies that they use, more scaled technologies, different die sizes, though they kind of kept a similar die size, and they put them in different generations of Apple chips, uh, culminating at, again, nowadays we have the M1 and now the M2, which are really monsters that have replaced even the um, high-end Intel cores that were inside the Macs and, and so forth. 
So if we look inside one of these, you know, iPads, which is kind of a good example of a, a real cool and uh, and sophisticated embedded system, well, what we can see is taking apart um, the the iPad uh, two. What we have it's really dominated by all kinds of IOs. We have uh, you know a huge uh, LCD screen. We have as much room as possible is spent on the battery so it will last as long as possible and all kinds of external connections actually the computer board is just this little thing over here that's the whole computer inside this entire system and if we look at this computer board you know what we have here is the apple a5 soc that's here in the middle all kinds of other components that are needed to support it and of course a pretty big um, piece of flash so we can have some storage inside so let's go and take a look at this soc which is what we're really talking about in, in this course and so this is the um, the a5 soc and what we will have inside this you know is two arm cores that are running at one gigahertz each we'll have four gpus that, that help it uh, make its display and we'll have a ddr interface that talks to the external dram and many other different types of little accelerators and all kinds of ios and so forth that, that it has inside here